Uh, we kind of alternate here. We went with the high school first, then we're going to go middle school, high school, middle school, etc. So next, I would like to introduce you to Paul Rogala, uh, who teaches middle school science at Indianola. Thank so you. I'll turn it over to Paul. Uh, high school teachers, raise your hand. Middle school teachers. Elementary teachers. All right, well. This is seventh grade science, life science at Indianola. We teach sixth grade is physical science, seventh grade is life science, eighth grade is earth science. We have a block schedule. I love it because I get to do a hands-on lab every time, and that's what my class is about. It's about hands-on. The sparks, which you have in front of you, came as a result of a grant, and we use those several different ways. Um, I use them for heart. There's paddles to measure the heart. I use them in a lab where we look at CO2 levels increasing in the oceans, lowering the pH. So we have experiments where they have distilled water, salt water, and vinegar. And they use both pH paper indicator and the sparks. So the sparks are always there. We do a body temperature lab. When I get to the microscope unit, for years, I've had compound microscopes, but I really never know exactly what they see through the lens, other than their drawings. And the drawings aren't always correct. Like, I, I start with the letter E and color thread, and it's amazing the drawings I get. They're nothing like what's under the scope. So the sparks are next to them, and they can go back and forth, the sparks or the compound light microscope. And I can really see what they're seeing there. With the sparks, you have lots of options, snapshots, journals. Uh, there's a place where kids can put in their computer chips. There's, uh, you can build labs. The labs are already in there. The spark, like the heart lab, is already in there. And they just follow the steps. And it graphs on the pH labs. If they're doing several pH, it graphs them. And they can see the different pHs as they occur. <laughs> The, and when I get to my cell biology, onion, elodea, spirogyra, water net, plankton, both zooplankton and phytoplankton, we do those under the compound light microscope, but always having the spark there to put it under there and get that big picture is good. Uh, osmosis diffusion, we use them. I do labs. My labs, one of my labs is to stimulate or inhibit the growth of a fungus. And of course, they grow those on petri dishes underneath the sparks. It's an incredible picture they get. You can't do that under the microscope. Also in bacteria, they can put that under there and look at the colonies. So what you're going to do today, everything's, everything's right there in front of you. The only thing that if you want to do the red onion lab, and I'll give you the options on that when you start. Could you hand those out for me? Oops. And there's also uh, colored pencils here if you want to color. But what you're going to do is you're going to use the sparks. And the instructions are on the handout that you're going to get. And are you familiar with a wet mount? Wet mount? You're just going to take the glass slide. You're going to add a drop of water in the cover slip. And in your container, there are two glass slides and there are two cover slips. There's also distilled water and salt water. So you have really four options. You can look at red onion under distilled water, which would be a hypotonic situation. And then you can introduce the salt water. And the way you're going to introduce the salt water is you're just basically going to take your paper towel and you've already got it in distilled water, and you're going to add a drop of salt water next to the cover slip and a paper towel on the other side, and you're going to draw the salt water underneath. That takes a little bit of time to do that, so that's another option. The other option is inside your kit, there are samples of elodea, a beautiful leaf, and my favorite of all time, everybody's favorite, spirogyra, which is a green algae. If you haven't seen spirogyra in a microscope, you haven't seen one of the most beautiful microalgaes you can find. So that's another option. Or if you want, you could take one slide, put spirogyra on one and LED on the other, put your cover slips on and take a look at both. Go. It's up to you now. Now you go to work. It's all right there. Work together. The, the sparks are charged. 
So you don't have to charge them up. If you do get where it's low, we can plug them in. But they should be charged. Everything's in the kit there in front. If you need something, let me know. Put your first and last name on there, the date and your period. Make sure you put your last name on there. It's required. If any time during this you have some questions, raise your hand. You don't have a lot of time, so you got to get going. If you want to do the red onion, you're going to have to come to me. Otherwise, at your lab, you have the LOD and the spirogyra. If you're going to do the red onion, bring me a glass slide with a drop of water on it. Because I got to float it on there. You do have three powers on the spark microscope. The microscope comes from Kinevision. You have 2x, 4x, and 10x. So you want to experiment with all those. And plug, I, I went through them all yeah, before I came to make sure. Hmm. It might be the scope. There, now just hit that middle one. Uh. It worked last time. We, got a, we already got one for that. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I don't know that one. Okay. I'm passing for a session. I was curious if I could get a class. What are other tips on this? Or you just what you have the spirogyra? Yep. Uh, well, that might not be spirogyra. There's another one in there too that's a little bit different. I think now show so true. Yeah. Yeah. in the middle. And now he's gonna Yeah. Now you gotta now refold. Find it. Did you add the salt as a or is this something? We did the salt for the onion. Okay. okay. There, there's your yeah, there's a little little more more. get it right in the middle. <laughs> it takes some technique. You guys are good. You're still not focused. Now you're on, and you're on 2x, so that yeah. you're, vi okay. We saw that you can email stuff, send, or share. But, uh, just turn it off and turn it on again, is what I do. That's one thing I've noticed is that they get started in it, but there's so many options they explore and they get they get lost. Yeah. I put a link on the agenda, one to the Kenavision website that gives you some specs on the Kenavision, one to a place where I found it on Amazon. I think they're around two hundred forty some dollars. Also a link to the Spark. One thing folks may or may not be aware. These cost about 350 bucks, but Heartland has them available for checkout. Mm -hmm. We have four kits that come with eight sparks. We do not have the Kinevision yet, but <laughs> if there's interest, that's certainly something we can pursue. But they do come with probes. 
We have four kits. One is a water quality kit. So it comes with things you would test water. So it has dissolved oxygen, pH, uh, humidity, those types of things. We have one that is physical science. So it tests things like force and electrical uh, conductivity, those types of things. We have one on human body that has heart rate, EKG, respiration, those types of things. And then we have one that is more specific to renewable energy. Uh, and it has some wind turbines in it, so kids can uh, design and test different wind turbines. Uh, it has some solar cells in it, and it has a hydrogen fuel cell in it. And all of them then can plug into here to collect your data. But all the sparks come with probes uh, that you can use. And, and as Paul mentioned, there are pre-made uh, lessons already on here. Just know that you will need to know what probes you need to do that lesson because there aren't the lessons for every, or aren't the probes for every single lesson that is on the spark. But if it is something you're interested in trying, you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of them first. You could check them out from Heartland and try. And I put the link to the Heartland website on the agenda as well. If you go into there, uh, it goes right to the science, and then you go down to kits that are available, and you can uh, see what more detail on each of the kits. Now, in order to check the kits out that have the sparks, you get to have training first. So you are not allowed to check them out until you get the opportunity to spend some time with one of us uh, giving you some instruction on how to use the spark. It takes about 45 minutes. Uh, because once you learn how to use one probe on a spark, you really know how to use all of them. Because just like you were using the Kenavision, whatever probe you plug in, it automatically knows that's the probe and it will measure it. Only instead of getting images, you would get a graph. And there's a fair amount of research, as you probably already know. Kids learn much more or have a much better understanding if they can actually see the graph happening instead of collecting a bunch of data and two days later trying to put that on a sheet of paper and then understanding what that graph meant. Um, so it does provide instant feedback. So just to let you know, we do have that available. Any other questions for Paul or me about the kits? All right, thank you, Paul. Give him a round of applause.